Hello viewers, welcome to this video. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at an admission control plugin called uh, Part Node Selector. So we had a discussion in our uh, Just Me and Open Source Slack channel where we were discussing about few options about how to assign a part to a specific set of worker nodes, all right? So I've got a notes here, um, where is it? Yep, so this one, um, what we'll be seeing in this video is, um, we will be looking at how to enable an admission control plugin called pod node selector. So once you install that pod node selector, we should be able to um, schedule the pods to a particular set of worker nodes. So the use case would be, um, for example, there is this these default namespaces. So there's a default namespace, cube system, dev and prod namespace. So my requirement is Whenever I deploy a pod, a deployment or a daemon set, replica set or stateful set to a particular namespace, I want the pods to be deployed on a set of worker nodes, right? So here, for example, if I deploy anything to the dev namespace, um, it has to be deployed only on these uh, set of specific set of worker nodes and these specific set of worker nodes for another namespace. So we're just separating out different namespaces. For example, this one is dev, this one is prod, and we've got like set of worker nodes which are high performance worker nodes and these one are not so high performance they don't have much disk space or they are not on the latest cpu or something so this is a kind of uh grouping your worker nodes where do you want to run your workloads production workloads i want to run on faster machines and dev workloads i want to run on just lower lower spec machines so the important thing here is to, you can always uh, include the node selector option in the pod spec. I've done a video on node selector. So in your pod specification, you can specify node selector and which node you want to schedule uh, your pods to. But that will be laborious work. If you've got lots and lots of pods, you will go ahead and change uh, the pod specification on each of the pods. So by using this pod node selector admission control plugin, you can just do that in one uh, one space, which is the uh, the namespace. So you just edit the namespace, you set the namespace so that any pod that gets deployed to a particular namespace will be scheduled to a group of uh, selected work, worker nodes. So for that to happen, we need to, as always, because we are using node selector basically, um, we have to label the worker node. So that's what we will be seeing in this video. So any pods that I'm deploying in the dev workspace will be uh, scheduled on to worker nodes that has the label uh, yen equals dev. And any pods that I deploy to prod namespace will be scheduled to any worker nodes that has the label n equals prod. So we are just grouping uh, machines together. So in my Kubernetes cluster, I've only got like two worker nodes, one master node and two worker nodes. So I'm gonna assign uh, dev to k worker one and prod to k worker two. Let's see how it all works together. Okay, back to the terminal. I've got my Kubernetes cluster and I'm running version 1.16.3, kubectl, get nodes, so I've got three nodes. Uh, this is from my Vagrant provisioning, so you all familiar with that one if you're using my Vagrant environment. So one master, two worker nodes, and the first thing is I'm going to label um, these two worker nodes. kubectl label node k worker one dot example dot com let's say n equals prod and kubectl oh no so let's label um n minus okay so i'm just removing that label i want to label k worker one as the uh, test machine so n equals sorry n equals dev and K worker two, I'm assigning the label N equals prod. So if you've got uh, multiple uh, worker nodes, you can just go ahead and um, label each of them to group those machines together. Okay, so we don't have multiple machines. We've just got like two machines. So one is labeled dev, the other one is labeled prod. Okay, so the next step is to um, enable the admission control plugin. So if you, used kubeadm method to provision your cluster or if you've used my vagrant environment um, we need to update the kube api server pod to enable the admission control plugin okay let's look at that one kubectl 
minus n cube system get parts. So I'm going to watch this part and I'm going to log into my kmaster machine ssh root at kmaster. So in my uh, kmaster, the master uh, node, I'm going to go into cd etsy kubernetes manifests. And in here, I'm going to edit the cube API server.yaml. VI cube API server.yaml. And under the command, so the command is cube API server. And I'm going to append or I'm going to edit one of the options that should say admission control. Yeah. Minus minus enable admission plugins. So there is one admission plugin already enabled, which is node restriction. So I'm going to add pod node selector so that's the uh, plugin name you have to make sure you use the right case pod with uppercase p uppercase n and uppercase yes pod node selector so once i save this file um kubernetes automatically um detects the change to this manifest and then it will restart our cube api server uh pod so temporarily you will lose connection to your kubernetes cluster but that's okay but it will come back again so now because the QB API server pod has been terminated and it's getting restarted, uh, you lost connection to the, because all your interactions to your Kubernetes cluster is through the uh, API server, the API server pod. So we should be able to um, interact with the cluster soon once the new pod is back online. So meanwhile, I'm gonna go to uh, the documentation pod node selector. And by the way, we are back in our cluster and QB API server, if you look at the age, it's eight seconds. So that's the new pod that got started. All right, so using admission controller, and I'm going to search for pod node selector. There it is. So we've labeled the worker nodes. The next thing is uh, we are going to edit our namespace and add this annotation. So let me copy that annotation copy we don't need that anymore so log out of the k master so now i got i haven't created the namespaces yep kubectl create namespace dev kubectl create namespace prod kubectl create namespace prod kubectl get namespace okay so we've got the dev namespace and the prod namespace let's edit them kubectl edit namespace dev i'm going to add the annotation here syntax off so that you can see what i'm actually doing so under metadata i'm going to add annotations and paste in uh, God, I didn't copy it. Okay. Pod node selector, admission controller. Search for pod node selector and the annotation. By the way, I'll put a link to this page in the description if you want it. Let me correctly copy it this time. Copy, copy. Uh, yep. Control C. Cool, so that's done. And now um, the node selector, what we are going to do is specify the node selector n equals dev. So I'm editing the dev namespace. So this annotation says that any pod or any resources that, you, that I deploy into this dev namespace, uh, a node selector option will automatically get inserted into the uh, specification. All right, so n is dev. And similarly, we are going to edit the prod namespace, add an annotation, annotations, paste it. Okay, let's, I haven't pasted it. kubectl edit namespace dev. Scheduler, I don't know why it missed from my uh, clipboard. Copy that, kubectl edit namespace prod, add annotations, annotations, paste n equals prod. 
All right, so our namespaces are ready now. So now if I deploy a sample uh, deployment, Nginx deployment, let's say into uh, a dev namespace, it should get scheduled only in kworker one. Okay, let's verify that. Watch minus X cube CDL minus N dev get pods minus O wide. So we don't have any pods in the dev namespace, but watch carefully what it's going to do. Cube CTL minus N dev run nginx minus minus image nginx minus minus replicas four. Oh, that's done. And here you see all the containers, all the pods are getting scheduled in kworker1 because in kworker1 we have the uh, label n equals dev and we've updated our namespace to have the node selector annotation. So all the pods that you deploy, all the spec all the uh, daemon sets, deployments, replica sets, stateful sets you deploy to the dev namespace will get scheduled only in kworker1. None of the pods will go to kworker2. Okay, so kubectl minus n dev get all. What it has actually done, right? Let's look at the deployment nginx. kubectl minus n dev uh, get deploy nginx minus o yaml point that to less. And here you will see the node selector you should be able to see, you should be seeing the node selector value here. Okay, let's verify. Node. Um, I thought we would be seeing a node selector in here. Deployment, okay, let's try one of the pods here. kubectl minus n dev get pod nginx five minus o yaml all right so here do we see node selector um yep there you go node selector n is dev so that's the thing that the annotation actually takes care of so any pod you deploy it automatically adds the node selector you could manually deploy all your pods you could manually update your pod specification to have this node selector Basically, it saves this admission control plugin saves some time um, so that we don't have to have these two lines in our pod specification. So, whenever we deploy anything to that namespace, the the annotation that we added to the namespace will automatically add this to all to every single uh, pod that you deploy. Okay, so kubectl minus n dev delete deploy nginx. Now let's go ahead and check the other one. Let's now look at the prod namespace. It's again the same thing. kubectl minus n prod run nginx minus minus image nginx uh, minus minus replicas three this time let's say. All right, so as you can see here, all the pods that we deployed to the prod namespace got scheduled in kworker2. It doesn't go to kworker1 because of the label n equals prod. So we've added that to the uh, annotation. kubectl describe namespace prod. Yep, the annotation scheduler alpha kubernetes.io node selector n equals prod. So that's the annotation bit that takes care of this uh, scheduling. All right, so I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. It's a quick one. Um, hope you found this useful. Just follow this. It's pretty easy. And if you've got any questions or any comments or any issues, just uh, let me know. I'll be able to help you. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've got lots of videos um, waiting to be released. And thank you so much for your time watching this video. I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.